How's it going programmers? We're just about to the end of the series here and in this last video we're going to be discussing some best practices for what is perhaps the most important skill any programmer can have, that being debugging. Debugging is such an important skill because as you're writing code, you're going to make mistakes. It's inevitable. You'll make a typo, you'll leave something out, you'll make a faulty name reference somewhere, use the wrong type, use a forbidden method with the wrong class. You're, you're just bound to make mistakes, uh, unless of course you're like me and you just always write your code perfectly the first time you you do that. If you're like me, you probably spend about five times more time debugging your code than you do actually writing it. And as a matter of fact, that's what most programmers do. Because you make plenty of mistakes as you write, and quite frankly, debugging is part of the learning process. That's where you're going to learn uh, most of what you will learn about programming. And I know I can say the same for myself. So today we're going to be looking specifically in VS Code what kind of debugging utilities that it offers that could help us improve our code's reliability and function so that it doesn't crash every five seconds, which is always preferable. And we're also going to be talking about some general best practices that any programmer will use while they're debugging. Let's go right ahead and see some of VS's debugging techniques in action. And to demonstrate this, I pulled up my simple find king algorithm, which I think I covered in my iteration tutorial or my functions tutorial. Anyway, from a previous tutorial, I uh, don't necessarily worry about how this works. Basically, what it does is we give it a small 3x3 chessboard, and it returns the coordinates of where the king is. However, this right now, as it stands, does not work. As you could probably see, this is simple enough to see what's wrong with it. I have a function which is aptly named bad function, uh, which sits in here, and that's pretty much wreaking havoc. So we're going to walk through a simple uh, debugging example using all of the techniques that we can, uh, we can find. Uh, so the very first thing that you can do is that if you try to run your program, it'll throw an exception. And usually Python is pretty good about uh, giving you the name of the exception that occurred. So it says the exception here is a name error that name data is not defined. So this is actually not a terribly descriptive error message. I if I didn't already just program this 20 seconds ago, I might not necessarily know exactly what's going on. But some other things will tell you, like uh, for example. Um, if it says uh, type is not hashable, that means you tried to put a list inside of a set, which is a big no-no. So let's try to use a few more techniques uh, to see what's going on. Another thing you might notice is that uh, Python here, this, uh, or I should say VS, is smart enough to recognize when things are kind of fishy, and it will under that, underline them in red squiggly. So that's a first indication that we might have something that's wrong. But another thing that might be helpful is if we put print statements in our program. So if I put uh, here, as we're iterating across i, I say, OK, let's print i. And as we're iterating across j, let's say print j. However, another uh, intelligent thing a programmer might do, and this is where you start to get clever with your print statements, is knowing that this bad function uh, mutates our set. So it, um, it mutates a set symbolically called data, which is technically our num set. Um, oh, actually, this should be nums. And um, what we can do is we could also print uh, before and after, or actually we should say print before, um, what that set looks like. So that might help us catch any errors. So if we try to run this now, it's going to print all kinds of information. So we see we start at the coordinates 0, 0. That's the first coordinate on the board that we check. And this is what our set looks like at that point. Then when we move on to another uh, coordinate, we have 3, 4, 5 because we remove, removed the 35. But we can tell that we're actually, the function tries to remove 35 each time we check a coordinate. But because the second time around the 35 is no longer there, that's because we removed it the first time, we're trying to remove a 35 again when it doesn't exist in this set. And that's where our problem is. So that's how we can use print statements to locate where our error is. However, there are other cool ways that we can accomplish this. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that using uh, the built-in uh, debugger. Or, well, we're already using the debugger, but we can uh, set breakpoints in our code. And what that is, is if you come over here, you'll see a little red dot appears. And you can choose a line that you want to set a breakpoint at. So I'll set it at this function call. So what a breakpoint does is instead of your code running through and trying to uh, go to completion run away, uh, when you run it, it'll execute all of the lines of code up until the breakpoint, 
where without actually executing the line that the breakpoint is on. So we haven't yet uh, called our find king function. Basically, up until now, it really hasn't even done anything, but it's gotten here. And now, on the left here, we have a list of all kinds of variables that we have, pretty much most of the information you could ever need to know. So we have uh, what our chessboard looks like. We have uh, our bad function, which this probably doesn't make any sense to most uh, most people. Uh, it certainly doesn't make sense to me, but if you're a computer, you would know we have a function object at this location in memory. And it even displays our faulty set, which we identified before as the, the cause of our issues. And what you can do is you can use the F11 key to step through your program line by line, and it will show you exactly what's going on in your code. So as we're stepping through I and J, we start at the coordinates 0, 0 and we get into bad function and now it shows you uh, over here where the execution flow of the code is and we've moved on to the body of bad function where we remove the 35 from data so after that's done uh, now we move to check to see if the space that we're on contains the king and it does not so we can move to a new set of coordinates so now we have uh, 0 comma 1 and then we'll go back into the body of bad function and we see that data only has a 3, a 4, and a 5. There's no 35, so when we try to remove the 35, we end up with an error. And it ends up uh, just um, shortcutting all the way to the end where it says, hey, uh, something went wrong. And this time we get actually a more descriptive error. It says uh, key error 35, which indicates to you that we had uh, tried to remove an element from the set, in this case a 35, which does not belong in the set. So that helps us remove, uh, I mean, identify exactly what's going on. Now, one more uh, cool debugging technique I can show you, and actually I showed you this in last week's tutorial, is you can comment out uh, parts of the code that you know are faulty. So we managed to pinpoint exactly what's going wrong. It is a uh, bad function, which obviously I intentionally made to throw errors. And you can go and you can comment this out. So you highlight the amount of lines that you want to remove, and you hit Control slash and it will comment out everything and this works for multiple lines so for example if I wanted to control slash all of this I could do so and now it's removed this faulty part of the code so when we go to run our code there's nothing in there that would throw an error and it runs to completion and prints the location of our king which is pretty cool and you can see what this looks like now if we uh, set a breakpoint and we try to step through everything eventually it finds the king and um, everything's all great and because we commented out the only reference to bad function, you can see as you step through that it will never go into bad function. So we've kept bad function here so we can analyze it and debug it later, but commenting out all of its references now makes sure that we don't uh, end up using bad function at all. So we don't actually like cause the error in our program. This is something you have to be careful with in terms of commenting stuff out, because if you comment out something that is supposed to be there, or something that's essential for the rest of the program to work, so for example, if I comment out this if statement, you will also see that this will cause errors too, because now we have this random indentation here, and we just don't even, uh, the interpreter won't even know what's happening without the if statement to give it context. Um, and ironically enough, it actually did work, but it didn't give us the correct answer. So 0, 2 is what we were looking for, but uh, it does zeros gave zero zero as the answer because it just immediately went into this return statement without even checking to see if the space that we were on had the king. There are so many awesome debugging features here in the, the VS development environment. For example, it's really good at catching exactly what line you may have an error on before you can even uh, before you even need to run the code. So if you go over here, currently we're in terminal, but if you go over to problems, this is where it might spot a lot of things that could go wrong. So for example, if you were writing your code and you made a typo, it could catch it here. So let's say I forgot to put a colon here at the end of this if statement. All you need to do is hit control S and it will scan through your code and it will find what exactly is going on and give you with reasonable accuracy you know what was wrong with it so you can see with the little red squiggle here it says invalid syntax uh, unknown it doesn't know what the invalid syntax is but it knows that there's a syntax error on line 15 and it's also shown here in this little problems window so then if I pop that colon back in everything's great and it says hey you don't have any problems uh, which is great and fantastic and we can move on our merry way as I mentioned before we can do a whole bunch of breakpoints so let's say you have a large piece of code with a whole bunch of breakpoints you can also uh, turn them on and off with uh, the debug 
part on the toolbar here. So if I hit disable all breakpoints, it keeps them in place so it reminds me where they were so I don't have to lose them if I want to activate them again. But now I can just run my code and it will run to completion. And if I go back to enable all breakpoints, then it goes back to uh, using the breakpoints that I defined, which is just great. And if you're feeling confident enough that your code works, you could also go to remove all breakpoints and they're all erased. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my book. It's called Building Smart Lego Mindstorms EV3 Robots and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you and I'll see you next time.